Well, hey team, and welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. It's wonderful to have you here. And today we are going to be doing a talk around uh, spermidine. So let's get into it. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, I've been doing this for a while and we'll be talking about health and longevity and all of those good biohacking things and getting you the best information so that you can perform for longer at your best. Now, over two years ago, I discovered, thanks to my friend, world-renowned cellular health expert, Dr. Elizabeth Yerth, about a compound called spermidine. And when Elizabeth mentioned something, I listened. So I started to do some research. Uh, what, back then, it was really pretty difficult to get hold of the supplement. And then I wanted to know, well, where did this terrible name, spermidine, come from? It doesn't actually sound like something that I want to ingest, right? But actually, it is. Now, spermidine is a naturally occurring compound that's found in our bodies. And it was first discovered in 1678 by a brilliant scientist. And I won't even try to pronounce his name because it's a really long one. Um, he was working with microscopes in his laboratory. And he observed tiny crystals in human sperm that had a unique structure and properties. What he was doing with it, I don't know why. <laughs> Fast forward to 1928 when the German biochemist Ernst Lecure successfully isolated this compound and named it spermidine. The name spermidine was derived from its original source, the human sperm, and found that, in fact, it was initially believed to be uh, specific only to reproductive fluids. But as research progressed, scientists discovered that spermidine is not limited to sperm, but is actually present in various tissues and in organisms. And this led to a deeper understanding of spermidine's role in cellular processes and its potential impact on human health. Now, it's actually found in wheat germ, it's found in aged cheeses, um, and spermidine is also found in um, diets that are rich in things like uh, yeah, wheat germ is the first one, and that's one that's got the most thing, and that's where it usually comes from when it's in a supplement form. It's one of the richest sources. And it's the embryo of the wheat kernel is impacted with essential uh, nutrients, including spermidine. Now, the second place that you can find it is in soya beans, in soy-based products. Things like tofu and tempeh are good sources of spermidine. Um, then you can also find it in mushrooms. So certain types of mushrooms, such as shiitake and white button mushrooms, contain spermidine. And these can be an, a, a delicious sort of addition to your meals. Now, peas and legumes also have it. Uh, peas, lentils, and other, other types of legumes are not only rich in fiber and protein, but they also have uh, a good amount of spermidine in it. Uh, the next one is corn. Um, that's another good place that you can find it, although corn has often got glyphosate, so make sure you're getting organic. Um, broccoli is another great place to get it. Um, the cruciferous vegetable is not only packed with vitamins and minerals, good for a whole lot of things, but it also contains spermidine. Uh, then there's spinach and other leafy greens like kale and collard greens also have spermidine. So maybe something that you want to put in your salads or smoothies. And then there's the cheddar cheeses. Now, some types of aged cheeses, including cheddar cheese, have been found to contain spermidine. And then also fish, certain types of fish, such as salmon and tuna, uh, contain spermidine along with other beneficial nutrients like those all important omega-3 fatty acids that we hear about so so often. Another one is natto. Now you may not have heard of natto but natto is a traditional Japanese fermented soya bean dish and is a potent source of this. Um, but you know getting spermidine in our food isn't always possible to get enough so it's great that we can now supplement with this compound and I'm actually looking at uh, launching a new range with this and so I'm quite excited about that so back to the story about uh, spermidine now I want to sort of go over some of the benefits that you can derive if you decide to take spermidine um, there's a whole lot of scientific research going on all around the world, and it's backed by, you know, some pretty big scientists looking at both animal models and human models. Now, we have more animal, as usual, than we do uh, human models, but more and more are coming to light. Now, benefit number one. It improves cellular health. Studies on animal models have shown that spermidine supplementation promotes autophagy, 
a process that helps remove damaged cellular components, leading to cellular rejuvenation and improved overall health. Autophagy is one of the main things that you can do to benefit your health. Now, number two, it enhances heart health. Animal studies have demonstrated that spermidine can help lower blood pressure, reduce cardiac hypertrophy, and improve heart function, potentially reducing the risk of heart disease. Benefit number three of spermidine is cognitive. Uh, research on mice has indicated that spermidine supplementation can enhance memory, learning, and cognitive performance. And these findings suggest a potential role for spermidine in supporting brain health. Now, that's something that I'm very, very interested in, everything related to brains. Now, number four is longevity promotion also something that I'm into. In animal models, spermidine has shown promising results in extending lifespan and increasing health span, which is even more important, which refers to the period of life spent in good health without those age-related diseases. And that's what we're all about. So number five, the benefit number five is anti-inflammatory effects. So animal studies have highlighted that spermidine's ability to reduce inflammation markers and modulate, modulate, not boost, modulate the immune system, suggesting potential anti-inflammatory benefits. Benefit number six, metabolic health. Uh, research on animals has indicated that spermidine supplementation may improve insulin sensitivity, regulate blood sugar levels, and positively influence metabolic parameters, which could be beneficial for conditions like uh, diabetes. Also, so many people have insulin resistance and they don't know it. So this may be something that you want to add into your regime to improve your insulin sensitivity and lower your risk of developing diabetes, which of course is the gateway to so many of the other age-related diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's and so on. Um, benefit number seven, so liver protection. Animal studies have suggested that spermidine can help protect against liver damage caused by various factors such as alcohol consumption and oxidative stress, showcasing its potential hepatoprotective effects. Now, number eight, it's neuroprotective, as I said before. Now, studies on animal models have indicated that spermidine may offer neuroprotective effects, potentially reducing the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, which are on the rise. I just did an interview with Dr. Dale Bredesen on Alzheimer's, so something that you definitely want to have a look at, and supporting brain health. So that's something that's really, really important. Over 50 million Americans, it's just America alone, are going to die with Alzheimer's. So anything that we can do to slow neurodegenerative diseases is really important, not to mention all the people that have had traumatic brain injuries or athletes who've had repeated brain injuries. So this is something that you want to put on your radar. Now, benefit number nine is its anti-cancer potential. Now, this one needs further research. This has been research done in animals, but I'm very interested in that, having written a book called What Your Oncologist Isn't Talking, Telling You, which is all about the metabolic approach to cancer. I'm interested in anything that's going to help us look at ways to mitigate cancer. So this one needs further research. But preliminary animal studies have shown that spermidine may exhibit anti-cancer properties by inhibiting tumor growth, promoting cell death in cancer cells, and preventing DNA damage. So exciting, more needs to be done, but we'll wait and see on that one. Number 10 is gut health. So animal research has suggested that spermidine may positively influence gut microbiota, promoting a healthy balance of the beneficial bacteria and potentially supporting digestive health. Now, um, that's a microbiome, as you know, is the seat of your immune system. And anything that we can do to support that is going to be also worth looking at. Now, while these animal studies are incredibly promising, it is important to note that we still need more research, especially human research, and it is ongoing all around the world. There are many, many labs looking at this. And always, always consult your healthcare professional before you start taking any new supplement. This is for education purposes only. So that was the top 10 benefits of spermidine. Uh, backed by some pretty intriguing science and research studies on animals and mice and some human studies. There's been a big study that was done in Italy that was over 15 years looking at spermidine in the diet. And that one was surely something that you might want to look up because some of the results with that 
were extending actual lifespan and health span. So very, very, very interesting. Uh, we need more. We need more research, but keep your eye on this one. You'll be hearing about spermidine more and more, and I encourage you to look into it further. Thanks for watching, and please give us a review, rating, and uh, listen to our podcast, Pushing the Limits. If you love sort of longevity, biohacking, everything, anti-aging, high performance, then I'd love you to check out uh, pushing the limits, you can go to lisatarmity.com, hit the podcast button there, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're very, very appreciated if you do. Thanks, guys.